It's now 2016, so I decided I might do it once again. So here's the new and hopefully improved version of my VirtualBox tutorial. So first you want to go ahead and download VirtualBox from their official website virtualbox.org and uh, you want to download the right version for your operating system. If you're using Windows like I am, just go ahead and click on the top link and you should be good to go. Once you have installed VirtualBox, this is what you should see, the VirtualBox manager interface. Now it may seem intimidating at first, but trust me, it's really simple and easy to work with. So in order to get started, you want to click on new, which will allow you to create a new virtual machine. So now you have to name it something. So I'm just going to call it lab rat. And you want to select the type of OS that you'll be installing. If you're installing Linux, you can select Linux. You can choose any operating system that you like. I'll be installing Windows 10. So I will just find it over here and um, select it. So as you can see, it says version is Windows 10 64 bit. Now here's uh, something that I'd like to clarify because some people were confused about this in the previous tutorial. Selecting the operating system over here only sets your virtual machine up accordingly. It does not install the OS for you. You still need an ISO file to install the operating system, which we'll get to later this time. Last time I skipped it, but a lot of you had problems because of that. We'll get to the operating system installation part in a moment. Now you want to pick your memory size. I'm going with 4096, which basically means 4 gigabytes of RAM. You can pick whatever you like based on um, your preferences. I would recommend if you have eight gigabytes or more, go with three to four gigabytes for the VM. If you've got less RAM than that, go with two gigabytes. Just make sure that your host has enough memory left over to work. Because if you allocate too much of your RAM, your host is going to slow down while using the virtual machine and it can cause problems, it can cause your system to crash. Keep in mind that it's more important to have resources free on the host machine rather than on the virtual machine. Because if something goes wrong on the virtual machine, it might crash, but you'll still have a functioning computer. However, if the host has issues and crashes, you're going to lose all the work on your virtual machine. You're also going to lose all the work on your host machine. So keep that in mind. Now we'll go ahead and create a new virtual hard disk. Also, if you are a new user, you might want to go ahead and use guided mode, which will be more like a traditional wizard interface. But I'm just going to go ahead and hit create. Now here we are going to pick the size of the hard drive. I'm going to pick 40 gigabytes. Once again, this is going to depend on how much storage you have and how much you want to allocate. Make sure you check dynamically allocated over here because if you check fixed size, it's going to take up 40 gigabytes of your hard disk no matter what you do. But if you select dynamically allocated, the size of the hard drive file is going to grow as you use more and more of it. So although we have 40 gigabytes allocated over here, if I only use 10 gigabytes, that's all the space that will be taken up on my actual SSD or hard drive, whatever you have. Here you want to pick your hard disk file type. I'm going to go ahead and um, pick VMDK, that is virtual machine disk. The advantage of doing this is that this is also going to be compatible with other software. If you use the virtual box disk image, you cannot migrate it later on. So now that we have hit create, the basic structure is ready. But before we go ahead and install the operating system, we want to take a look at settings. And I highly recommend that you do the same. So you want to go under advanced and enable shared clipboard. Make it bi-directional. This will allow you to copy and paste things from your host machine to your virtual machine and vice versa. If this is turned off, it'll be really difficult for you to communicate with your virtual machine. Now going under system, as you can see, we have our RAM allocated over here. 
you can also allocate specific cores of your processor. Once again, it's critical to understand that you should always have enough free cores on your host system. So if you're allocating more cores, if you really need to, for example, if you just have a dual core system, then you might want to go ahead and reduce the execution cap. What this means is that as your VM starts using more and more CPU, it will only be able to access this much of the maximum CPU power that you have. So your host is not going to run out of resources. Now, if you're just using one CPU, it's okay to set this at 100 because the rest of the cores are free for your host system to use. But for lower spec systems, I would strongly recommend an execution cap of 80%. This will prevent your computer from freezing when your VM takes up a lot of CPU while running an intensive application. I'm going to go ahead and go with two cores for this VM. You want to make sure hardware virtualization is turned on over here. Now moving on to display. Video memory. If you want to use proper animations in your OS, I would strongly recommend turning these on and bumping up the video memory to 256 megabytes. I'm running a GTX 970 with 4 gigabytes of VRAM, so this should be no problem. Once again, it depends on how much you have, but this is probably one of the resources where there's really no major downside to allocating more to your VM. Now going into storage, you want to make sure that your hard drive is selected. Now here is an option for solid state drive. So if you are using an SSD, you want to make sure you check this before you boot up. In audio, you can turn audio on and off. I'll just leave it on. Network, you want to make sure that you're attached to NAT. And that should immediately allow you to use internet on your virtual machine. Serial ports are not really necessary, so we're just going to leave that off. USB. I have enabled USB controller, but by default you may not have the USB 3.0 controller enabled. You may have to download VirtualBox extensions to enable that. Once again, that's very easy to install, so you shouldn't have an issue. If you don't need it though, no problem, just leave it off. Now another thing I'm going to add is a shared folder. Now, why this is important is to allow you to send files from your host machine to your virtual machine. And VirtualBox doesn't really have great drag and drop support. If you're using VMware, this step wouldn't be necessary. You can easily drag and drop most files, but for VirtualBox, I'd really recommend setting up a shared folder. So I'm going to pick the folder path over here. That's good to go. Now you want to make sure both these options are checked, read only and auto mount. Auto mount means that it is going to mount the network drive whenever you boot up your virtual machine. If you uncheck this, you'll have to manually mount your shared folder whenever you need it, and that's annoying. Read only ensures that your virtual machine does not write to the shared folder. Now, if you are making a VM for other purposes, then I guess you should have this read-only option unchecked. Let's say if you just want to try out a different operating system, you're using Linux or, or you just want to play some old games, if that's why you're installing a VM, this should be unchecked so that you can copy files from your VM to your host as well. However, in our case, I'll be using this for the purposes of testing, running malware, doing all sorts of crazy things. So I want to make sure that read only is checked so that nothing that I do on the VM can affect the files on my host system. So security wise, this is an important setting to keep in mind. Now we're pretty much ready to go. Our system is fully configured. Now we just have to boot up and install our operating system. That is in this case, Windows 10. So let's go ahead and start the VM. Now you want to go ahead and press F12 before it actually loads up. This is going to give you the temporary boot device selection. You might want to use Control F to go full screen if you like, and you can always go Control F again to go back to windowed mode. So now we want to go to Devices, Optical Drives, and then click on Choose Disk Image. This is going to simulate inserting a disk into your virtual computer. 
So I'm going to select the Windows 10 installation media ISO. Now, how did I get this? Well, I used the Windows media creation tool a long time ago, but you can use whatever DVD or install media that you have and you can just create an ISO from that or you can directly grab the ISO from the internet. If you're using Ubuntu or Linux or any other free operating system, it should be very easy to grab from their official website. And once you have the file, all you have to do is select and open it. So now that our CD drive is mounted, we want to go ahead and press C to boot from CD-ROM. And as you can see, Windows 10 Setup is loading up. Now we're just going to pick our language and proceed with the installation. So I guess you guys can take it from here. I hope this video is helpful and it allows more of you to explore the wonderful world of virtualization. Please like the video if you enjoyed it and let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Consider supporting me on Patreon if you think it was worth it. Don't forget to subscribe to the PC Security channel. Thank you for watching. This is Leo, and as always, stay informed, stay secure.